Hi folks, this is Pastor Charles here in Dallas, Texas. I'm making this video today more in the way of a, a public service announcement and not so much as a matter of uh, church business or, you know, related to the ministry. Uh, this is a personal issue that I have uh, been wrestling with and contemplating now for a number of years. And as an American citizen, I feel like this is something that really needs to be discussed in uh, a public forum. And I think people in the United States of America need to stand up and start demanding that our uh, government take action in regard to this matter. The matter I speak of is uh, credit reporting and the uh, the bottomless pit that the credit reporting system here in the United States has created for the average American citizen. The criteria that has been established for credit reporting is such that uh, the average person, no matter how hard you try, no matter how hard you work to establish and maintain perfect credit and to maintain a high credit score, you're never going to be able to do so. The credit uh, system in America is designed in such a way that the only people who really can have uh, a high score, and scores are important because they're used in everything from loans to mortgages to car payments uh, to credit card uh, interest rates. All the banks and lending institutions use your credit report, your FICO number, as a way of determining what interest rate they're going to charge you and what have you. So it's extremely important that people have, be able to have and maintain a healthy credit number. And obviously, the higher the number, the better off you are, and the lower rate you can get, so on and so forth. However, the system in the United States today is designed in such a way that the average American just can't get ahead for all the, all the trying in the world. You just can't do it. They take into account the length of time that you've had credit. They average out, which makes no sense to me, they average out the uh, length of your credit based on when you've opened your various accounts. So if you have 10 accounts and 10 of them, uh, five of them were open 20 years ago and five of them were opened in the last five years, you know, they show your average length of credit as being like three years. Uh, that's that's the average length of your credit, which is insane, because obviously you've been working with credit and maintaining your credit for 20 years. But by doing this averaging it out baloney, they're able to reduce the amount of time that you show as having, you know, maintained credit. Then on top of that, they... they uh, use as part of the scoring system the amount of available credit that you have versus the amount of uh, credit that you happen to be using at that moment in time. Now, uh, many people not understanding how the system work, they simply attain credit that they need and use it and uh, most people, obviously, if you use your credit, you're having to pay over time. That's why you're, you're needing the credit to begin with, to give yourself the ability to kind of stretch out the repayment, whether it be for a car, house, you know, whatever the case might be, uh, bills, you know, <laughs> whatever. And uh, if you're a wealthy person, obviously, you can obtain credit and you can use it every month. You can put $30,000 on a credit card, and then you turn around at the end of the month and you pay your bill. The only problem is the average American is not in that position to be able to do that. So the, uh, the wealthier you are, 
the easier it is to maintain a better credit score. It doesn't matter how good you make your payments because part of what they use in determining your credit score is your payment record. But that only accounts for a small part of your overall credit score or credit rating. So you can have an excellent payment record. You can have had credit going back 10, 15, 20 years. But if you've opened anything more recently, then that lessens the average amount of time that you've had credit, which in turn lowers your score. And unless you are utilizing the system and you're smart and you're using the system and you're making your you know how the credit reporting agencies work and you're you're building your score by using the system to your advantage for instance in my case i know how credit scoring works so over the years i've established any number of accounts uh, with places that I might occasionally do business with. Not not places I do business with every day or even every month. But, you know, I may occasionally buy something from this store. And a lot of, uh, a lot of various retailers might offer a card. And the card gives you uh, certain advantages, like maybe you save 5% or 10% every time you use their card at their store. Uh, or they'll have special finance uh, rates where they'll offer um, promotional periods where uh, you can buy stuff on the card and you have a year interest-free or two years interest-free, whatever the case might be. That's true of places, for instance, like uh, Ashley Furniture or the Dump Furniture, um, Lowe's, for instance, uh, you get 5% off all your purchases at Lowe's. And then also they'll send you emails and they'll have uh, promotional uh, periods where you can have zero interest for a certain amount of time. And so I've opened accounts with any number of different retailers. And another thing they take into account for your credit score is variety of credit. They want to see a variety uh, one thing that worked against me for years was that I didn't have a housing or mortgage on my credit report. And literally, I had any number of times that um, I'd apply for something and they would come back and they'd say, nope, we're not going to give it to you because you don't have any housing credit showing on your report. Well, my partner and I now own our second house and of course I'm on the mortgage, so now I have that on my credit and that helps because they look for a variety. Now here's the, here's the thing that, it, it's, it's that endless cycle that I'm talking about where you're in this hopeless cycle. They want you to have housing. They want you to have a car note. They want you to have personal loans. They want you to have credit or lines of credit. They want you to have credit cards. You know, they want you to have different kinds of credit cards. Uh, retailers versus uh, MasterCard, Visa, American Express, Discover, so on and so forth. And all of these factors, I mean, they have so many factors that they use in determining your credit score. And for the average American, you just cannot get out of the 600s. It, it's impossible. I don't care what you do. And then creditors have the audacity, and one of them, one of the worst offenders is an organization called Synchrony Financial. Synchrony issues credit cards for hundreds of various retailers and different businesses. Um, they issue for uh, Lowe's Home Improvement. They issue for Harbor Freight. They issue for the Dump Furniture. They issue for Ashley Furniture. Uh, they actually have some MasterCard and Visas that they issue. Uh, they have a, a Texaco, Chevron Texaco MasterCard uh, uh, that they issue. And I could go down a list a mile long of companies that Synchrony represents. And these creditors will have the audacity, if you don't use their credit card, 
not just use it, but use it to their liking in a certain period of time, uh, synchrony especially will close your account. And they can do so without any warning whatsoever, without any notification whatsoever. I have worked for decades to build my credit and to establish good credit. I've done this on purpose. I've, I've done this for a reason. I've done this so that at some point in the future, I might be in a position, my partner and I, to have the credit to maybe even buy some investment property so that we could build our wealth and build our income through uh, owning some rental property and stuff like that. Well, in order to ever be able to do that, you have to have really strong credit. So over the years, I have used the system. I know how the system works. I know all the factors they look at. So I have done everything in my power to be able to satisfy every one of the various factors. I've built up the amount of available credit I have. I've built up the amount of um, variety of credit that I have. Uh, I have... Uh, paid on time 100% for literally the past 20 years. For 20 years, I've never paid a bill late. And uh, my credit report indicates this is the case, that I have 100% on time payment, so on and so forth. Now, when you first start establishing your credit, usually you have to start with companies that overcharge to begin with for their products. And then on top of that, they hit you with a ridiculous finance fee besides. So whether you pay the balance off immediately or whether you pay it over time, you're paying two or three times what that product would cost you at most other retailers. The only problem is you can't get credit anywhere. So therefore you have to do business with places like Finger Hut or Geddington, and these companies charge ridiculous astronomical prices for their products to begin with, and then they charge an outrageous like 30% interest rate on top of that. So if you pay it out over time, you're going to pay literally three times what you could go down to Walmart and buy the same product for. But in order to establish credit, most people will begin with companies like this. That's what I did. I started out with like Fingerhut and Geddington and companies of that nature. Then over the course of time, there are credit cards that specialize in people with little or no credit. And these companies are like uh, birds of prey. I mean, they prey on people that have little or no credit. And again, they charge you ridiculous annual fees. They charge you monthly so-called maintenance fees. This is all garbage. They charge you astronomical um, interest rates. But in order to establish credit, you have to go through that process because no card that does not charge an annual fee or no card is going to give you a credit card with a decent rate if you don't have some kind of already established credit. So everybody, including myself, goes through this process where you start out with the astronomical places and you, over the course of years, you buy stuff, you pay it out, you pay more. If you only pay your minimum payment, I'm going to tell you, Synchrony will close your account because you only paid your minimum payment. Now that shouldn't be legal because minimum payments, according to your contract, are what you're contractually obligated to pay. But Synchrony Financial will close your account if all you pay is your minimum payment. So you better be prepared to pay more than your minimum payment every month or else uh, that account, they'll close it without a thought. And um, Synchrony is by far, by far, the most predatory uh, credit card issuer in the country, by far. And I would encourage you folks to listen to me carefully. If you go into a place of business 
and they are offering a credit card, you need to ask them, who issues your credit cards? Are these issued by Synchrony Bank? If they answer yes, trust me when I tell you, don't get it. Do not even try to get it. Because even if they approve you, these people have a history, a running history of closing accounts on people. And I've been through this myself recently, as a matter of fact. Uh, they literally closed every single account I had. Listen to this with them. And it turns out I had about a dozen accounts that came through Synchrony Bank. Some some of the accounts I had, I didn't even realize were issued through Synchrony until this happened. But um, my credit number was 770. My on-time payment record is perfect. I have never been late with a payment to them, and I guarantee you 99% of the time, I don't make minimum payments. Very, very seldom do I ever make a minimum payment. I try to pay my accounts as quickly as I can, get them out of the way, make sure you know that I don't have a balance uh, outstanding. I've taken advantage on, I had a Lowe's card with them that I built my credit limit up to $10,000. I had a MasterCard with them issued through Texaco, Chevron Texaco, that I had established my credit up at $5,000 with them. And no annual fee, you know, uh, the interest rate was fairly reasonable. I had a number of retailers, Harbor Freight tools, you know, um, uh, Lowe's, like I said, uh, Ashley Furniture. At one time I was gonna buy a dresser and the only reason that I opened the account was, again, it's about building the amount of credit that you have, the, the variety of credit that you have, building the available credit that you have versus the amount of credit that you're actually using. If I were simply to have bought this uh, dresser on an existing credit card, then that would have reduced the ratio between my available credit and the credit I'm using. By opening an account through that specific retailer, I not only added to my available credit by whatever limit they gave me, but also then, you know, the amount that I actually charged, <clears throat> um, it, it wound up not affecting my amount of credit used to the amount of credit I had available by far less, you know, and this is part of the logic, part of the reason that I would do this, and I'd open accounts with specific businesses. I built my credit up with Harbor Freight over the years. I used a lot of tools. I, I've, over the years, I've always done a lot of work uh, at my house on my own or what have you, and I'd established my credit with them, and I built my credit limit up quite high. Mind you, I'm not using all this credit. By no means am I using all this credit. But they kept raising my limit and raising my limit because I used the card over the course of time and they would raise the limit. So all of a sudden I've got a credit score of 770. I've got a perfect payment record. And uh, I've got a variety of credit. I've got a home on my credit. I've got a car on my credit. You name it, I've got it. I meet all the criteria so that I can have an excellent FICO score and an excellent credit rating. And all of a sudden, without warning, I had no clue they were going to do this. And furthermore, I had no idea they had done it. They also issue credit cards, by the way, for Sam's Club whether it be the Sam's Club credit or the Sam's Club MasterCard, Synchrony issues that credit card. I, ad I advise you, do not get it. They will, pardon the phrase, screw you. They will screw you enormously before it's all said and done. And it'll hurt your credit something awful. When these people close your credit card because 
you're not using it as much as they'd like you to, or you're only making minimum payments and they want you to make more. Whatever their reasoning, they do not send you a letter telling you they're going to. They do not send you a letter, uh, an email or anything telling you that they have done it. I went to Sam's. I, I've been using my Sam's Club card, uh, MasterCard, for years to buy gas. Um, you're supposed to save like 5% at the pump or something if you use your card, you know. So I went to buy gas, my partner and I. And uh, I went to run the credit card, and it said denied. And I was like, denied? What on earth are they talking about? I just used it a week ago, mind you, or, or a couple of weeks ago. And I'm like, what do they mean it's denied? So when I got home, I went online, and I opened the uh, website for Sam's Club credit card. And it shows both of my credit cards, the, the regular Sam's Club account and my Sam's Club uh, MasterCard account. And on top, there's a banner that says, this account has been closed. Doesn't tell you why. Doesn't offer you any explanation. Just says, this account has been closed. I was like, what on earth? So then I go to the other account, and I see it says, this account has been closed. And I'm like, I, what on earth is going on? I, for the, I've got beautiful credit. I've got perfect credit. And these people are telling me my account's been closed. I'm like, who on earth would have closed this account? I don't understand what's going on. Well, I knew that Synchrony uh, managed and issued the cards for Sam's Club. So I thought to myself, you know what? I'm going to go to the Synchrony website and I'm going to check my other Synchrony accounts and see what's going on. So I open the Synchrony account, uh, the Synchrony website, and Synchrony has it. So if you have, you know, a bunch of accounts through them, that you can view all of them through the single website, you know. So I went to their website, and one account after another, I'm going down the list, every single one of them had a banner this account has been closed. This account has been closed. This account has been closed. I was flabbergasted. All told, by Synchrony doing this, without explanation, without reason, without warning, nothing. They, they claim, when I tried to contact them, they basically come back and say to me, well, we have the right to do this. We, we have our own criteria, and we can do this at any time. That's all they tell you. They don't tell you what criteria they use. They don't tell you what you know, made them determine that your account needed to be closed. They don't tell you anything. And so uh, when you add up all the accounts that they closed, they also issue for PayPal, by the way. If you have a PayPal credit card or credit, it, they issue that. And uh, I believe they also do the eBay credit card. And so anyway, when you added up all the various retailer accounts and MasterCards and what have you that I had with Synchrony, it literally was a, a available credit of, I'd say, probably $50,000 or better, maybe even higher than that. Well, by them closing all these accounts, listen to what happens to my credit score. Immediately my amount of credit being used compared to the amount of credit I have available skyrockets because the amount of available credit, not because I'm using more than I was using five minutes ago, but because the available credit I have now has been lessened by a total of $50,000. So now my available credit versus the amount of credit I'm using has skyrocketed, which in turn brings my score plummeting downward. Also, now all the ages of the accounts that I had uh, through Synchrony, if I had accounts with them that dated back 10 years or 15 years, however long, all of a sudden now all of those come out of 
the average for my average account age, which in turn causes my credit to plummet. My credit fell by 50 points in a single afternoon. As I begin to get reports, because obviously I subscribe to a credit reporting, you know, um, monitoring system, and as the uh, credit reporting agencies began to get noticed that these accounts had been closed, my credit score was falling, I mean, falling, falling, falling. All of a sudden, I go from 770 down to like 730, and I mean, it's, a, it's still falling because they don't report everything all at one time. It takes them a while to report all these things. Contacted them, they offer no explanation. They offer no reasoning. Folks, there are many of us out there today who, like myself, we understand how the system works, and if you're smart, you're trying to work within the system to establish good credit. I have tried real hard to build the amount of available credit that I have, not because I'm planning on using it. it has nothing to do with my planning on using that amount of credit. It has to do with if I want to be able to use my credit at all, then I need for the health of my credit uh, score, I need to have three or four times the available credit to the amount of actual credit that I'm going to use. Because they say that it's best if you keep your credit usage down to uh, 30% or less of your total available credit. So therefore, you need to keep it down. 30% or less, that means you need literally three or four times the amount of available credit uh, compared to what you're actually going to use. Because if you have only $25,000 worth of credit and you wind up during the course of the year having to use 15000 of that, then you're using, you know, more than 50% of your available credit, and that just emaciates your credit score. So one of the things you have to do is build up the amount, and that's one of the things that I've been doing over the years, and that, again, that's the logic behind my opening various accounts, you know, at various places. And a lot of times I'd open an account, they might, let's say they give me an initial credit limit of $2,000. I may only buy something there for $200. And then I turn around and I pay it off. But now I've got $2,000 available credit that I'm not using, which in turn helps me to lower my available credit to my actual use credit ratio, which in turn helps my credit score to rise. Uh, but if you're a smart person and you're doing this, they're going to make sure they punish you. They're going to make sure that uh, you wind up on the short end of the stick. And the credit reporting agencies are in on that. Credit reporting agencies and websites like Credit Karma and Credit Guru and all this other foolishness, Credit Sesame, all of these companies... Uh, do business with various cre lenders and credit card issuers and what have you. And if you belong to any of these sites, you know that they're constantly recommending credit cards to you. And they're telling you, oh, your credit could be helped if you add another credit card because that'll, you know, add to your available credit versus the amount of credit you're using. And of course, they know a lot of American consumers are not very well disciplined and if they open an account with $1,000 worth of credit, before too long, they're going to be using that. You know, uh, I'm not one of those consumers. I can have credit out the wazoo, and I'm not going to use it unless I want to use it and need to use it. Otherwise, it'll just sit there, and I, and I want it there for the occasion when I might need it or might want to use it. And uh, personally, I actually go through my credit cards on a... Uh, kind of on a cycle. I'll, I'll use a certain card for a little while, 
then I put it away, and then I'll pull out a different one, and I'll use that one for a little while. That way, you know, I'm constantly using my various credit cards. I'll use one for a couple months, then I'll, you know, retire it for uh, the rest of the year or for a few months, whatever, and I'll use another one, you know. And that way I keep the accounts active. But, you know, I've been working myself to death trying to establish and build my credit over the last, oh man, 25, 30 years, you know. And I've been working myself to death. I'm not a rich person, um, you know, um, not by any means. And But I would like to be able one day to do some things that would help uh, to increase our income and increase our, <clears throat> I hate to use the term wealth because I'm not chasing wealth. I'm not the kind of person who has any notion of being rich. I'm not interested in being rich. But I would like to have the security for the future of, you know, establishing a decent income and what have you. And so this is why I've worked so hard over the years to build my credit, hoping that eventually my partner and I'd be able to, like I said, maybe buy some investment property uh, like a pastor friend of mine and a mentor of mine did many years ago. And that's how he was able to establish security for his future. And I would love to follow his example and be able to do like he did. And also my father, growing up as a kid, um, my father kind of showed me uh, how to do this by example because he did similarly and you know he was able to do very well for himself and it really had as much to do with simply establishing good credit and good credit practices and a good credit history uh, that helps you to do an awful lot in this life that you otherwise couldn't do including make money and, you know, establish wealth and establish security for your future. You know, there I've got some people that I know who are a little bit, uh, I don't know how to say this, I'm, I have a hard time sometimes, I get a little aggravated. They're asinine and stupid people. They don't think like I do, and they don't understand things the way I do, and therefore they don't understand why I do things the way I've done them. You know, I know one person who's bragged to me that, well, you know, I don't use credit, bless God, you know, I just do everything cash and blah, 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 you know. And that's all well and great if you're just trying to get through life, and this particular person makes all the money he ever needs to make. He, he's never had to make a house payment in his life. He's never had to make a car payment in his life. He has no ambition, especially at his age now, to ever own anything. He doesn't care about traveling. He doesn't care about doing anything. He doesn't maintain his own house so that it, it isn't falling in around his ears. And yet, this person sits there a kind of in judgment of me when I talk about how much it frustrates me and how much it's caused me grief to have synchrony in this particular instance do what they've done to destroy years and years and years of work on my credit. But he doesn't understand. I know what I'm doing, okay? He doesn't know what I'm doing. You don't know what I'm doing, but I know what I'm doing. And I'm doing it in an effort to eventually be able to have a greater income and to have a better, more secure future. That's why I've been working myself to death for the last decades to try to build and establish uh, excellent credit. We have got to have the government step in. There has to be regulation. There has to be some kind of intervention as to what criteria credit reporting agencies can use and how a credit uh, rating is established because the criteria they use now is such that the average person, regardless of how excellent a, a payment history they establish, you can have 100% on-time payments all the time, every time, 
And it will not help you if you don't have a mortgage. It will not help you if you don't have a car. It will not help you if you don't have a personal note or a personal loan, you know, on your credit. Uh, will not help you if your accounts are relatively, if, if your average age is, you know, uh, within the last five years or whatever the case might be. Will not help you if you're using more than 30% of your available credit. You know, all these criteria are established so that you're constantly, as a consumer, you are constantly losing. You are constantly going to be in a bad spot because the average consumer cannot possibly bounce between all this criteria and establish, you know, enough credit and what have you so that they can keep their number up where they can get a decent uh, rate on a car or they can get a decent rate on a loan or they can get a decent rate on a mortgage or even on a credit card for that matter. When I finally got to the place where I was able to establish uh, my credit was established enough so that I could get credit cards that had no annual fee. Now, a lot of these credit cards, when you first begin, their annual fees are ridiculous. They're like $100 a year. And then on top of that, they have the gall to charge you $10, $12 a month, a month for what they call, you know, a maintenance fee. So you're literally paying $250 a year just to have $1,000 worth of credit. And that, that is if you never use that credit card, you're still paying that those fees every year. Well, as I established my credit over the years and built it up, I was able to get cards that had uh, no fee, no annual fee, no maintenance fees, uh, that had a much better... Um, interest rate. So as I was say, and not only that, but obviously my credit was much better, so they gave me much higher uh, credit limits. So what I did then is I went back to some of the old accounts that I had where I was paying these monthly fees and annual fees, and I closed those accounts because after all, it makes sense, doesn't it? If I've got a card I don't pay anything for, and I've got a rate of you know, 16% versus 30% over here on a card I'm paying $250 to have a $1,000 credit limit on, then obviously it makes financial sense to cancel the old card and close it out. No longer am I paying the annual fee. No longer am I paying the uh, monthly fees. And I have $4,000 more credit available through this better card anyway. So I'm I'm I've I'm benefiting in that I have more available credit as it compares to my credit that I'm using, but because I closed that card, all of a sudden now my average uh, credit length lessens because those cards that charge the most are the oldest. So all of a sudden now, my average credit shows as being like three and a half years instead of being 10 years. All because I closed accounts that were costing me an arm and a leg. So what they're literally trying to do, what the credit reporting system is literally trying to do is convince people, oh, you need to just keep paying those fees. You need to just keep paying even if you don't use the card, just keep paying those fees because otherwise it's going to hurt your credit. Folks, if companies would act with integrity and if companies would act uh, with morality and decency, there would be no need for government intervention. Unfortunately, in America, uh, corporate America is not interested in conducting itself with any kind of ethic, with any kind of integrity, with any kind of honesty, with any kind of decency, with any kind of morality. Therefore, we need the government to step in and establish a fair and equitable system that is universal because all these different credit reporting, TransUnion, Equifax, 
all these different credit reporting agencies don't even follow the same exact criteria. So when you look at your credit number through all these different places, uh, it, in one place it'll be 770, in another place it'll show 740, in another place it'll show, you know, 729. I mean, it's ridiculous. It has to be, there has to be a universal standard. It has to be equitable. It has to be a standard that legitimately weighs an individual's credit worthiness because ultimately that's what these companies are supposed to be interested in your credit worthiness but the criteria that is used today in the credit reporting uh, industry in America uh, is such that it you know these credit numbers these FICO scores they do not for a minute reflect your credit worthiness. And it is a, it's insane to try to judge everyone across the board as though everybody, you know, you know one thing they love, another issue that I forgot to mention, there are so many factors that it's hard to remember to bring them all in. One of the other issues that they bring in is how much credit you've applied for recently or how much credit you've attained recently. And to me, that's insane. That's stupid. Why should that be? I don't need anyone to babysit my credit usage. I don't need you to sit over my shoulder and determine whether I've attained too much credit or what have you, you know, or recently I've gotten too much. Um, the fact of the business is, as I've said before, some credit I attain primarily so that I have it available. It doesn't mean I'm going to use it. it doesn't mean I'm going to use even 20% of it. Um, especially, you know, with retailers and, you know, individual retailers and stuff. And then on top of that, your credit score comes down if you've applied for credit at places because they go by the number of times you've applied for credit. Well, not every time you apply are you approved. So why in the world should it matter you know, how is it fair that they should determine, uh, based on the number of times you've applied for credit, you know, this is giving big business such an insight into all the details of your personal life so that they can lessen their uh, risk so that they can charge you the highest possible rates at all times because there were years that I had an excellent credit history, but because of these various factors, my credit score didn't really reflect my credit worthiness. It was lower than it should have been by far because maybe I was using higher than 30% of my available credit at the time, or maybe I had opened an account or two recently, you know. And so all these factors come into play, and my credit uh, FICO score, my credit reporting uh, score, was much lower than it should have been because it's not measuring my credit worthiness. There, why should big business be given such access to every detail of the average American's credit profile. Why should they be given unlimited access? You know, talk about Big Brother. Talk about somebody sitting on your shoulder and seeing, you know, everything in your life that they should or should not have access to see. Something's wrong with this, and we desperately need the government, apparently, to step in and do something because consumers are being bloody. They are being bludgeoned. They're being charged outrageous fees. They're being charged outrageous interest rates. They're being punished for establishing good credit and then getting rid of the old and, and in favor of the new where they can actually save money instead of spending all these fees and, you know, what have you. And this is not 
right. So I encourage you, write to your senator, write to your congressman, share this video with them if you must. Um, but something has to be done. And I want to end this video by saying to you today, do not do business with Synchrony Financial. Any company that issues a credit card through Synchrony, they're going to screw you in the end, and you can't afford it. God bless you. We'll talk to you soon.